Hi everybody, John here from All Miniatures Great and Small and today we're going to do another uh, unit discussion and we're going to be talking about the mighty tiger tank. I forget the commenter uh, who posted on my Sherman video uh, asking about the tiger tank. Uh, I had that idea in the back of my head already but I thought that was a great idea so I thought it would be the next one. So um, this is going to be kind of a unit overview just to kind of uh, explain to you guys the format I'm going to use. Try to make it a little bit more formalized than the Sherman one but still keep it pretty freewheeling. Um, first we're talking about the Tiger tank um, in the Western Front for late war. So we're talking about the uh, Fortress Europe, the D-Day uh, German books, um, and that's what I'm going to be kind of limiting at least this particular discussion to. So we won't be talking about mid-war Tigers or Eastern Front um, Tigers that much. We're going to be keeping our focus on um, late war on the Western Front. So the Tiger Tank, um, this is an interesting beast because it is a beast. Um, the Tiger Tank is, um, unlike the Sherman, if you watch my Sherman video, um, you heard me saying there's not much the Sherman can't do. It's, it's a jack of all trades tanks. Um, the Tiger, on the other hand, does some things fantastic, that's wonderful. Um, other things, not so much. So let's start by looking at the stats for the Tiger tank. Here are the Tiger stats. This is, we're currently looking at the Fortress uh, Europe book, but functionally um, this is the same stats as what you find in the German D-Day book. One Tiger tank cost 12 points. So to put that in perspective, um, using the Germans, uh, a Panzer IV, which is a, you know, close to a Sherman, it's a typical medium type tank, runs you about five to six points, uh, depending on, I think it's five and a half or six for a veteran version. Uh, so you can get two medium tanks for the price of one Tiger tank. So 12 points, so it's a big investment. If you're playing a typical 100 point battle, um, that's 12% of your force. See, I did that math in my head. So what you're getting for those 12 points are um, a tank that has front armor 9, side armor 8, top armor 2. And we're going to talk about each one of those uh, separately. Also, um, speed-wise, it's got a tactical of 10 inches, uh, a terrain dash of 12, a cross country of 18, road dash of 20, and uh, a very nice uh, cross rating of two plus. So it's only failing cross checks on a one plus. Now, if you remember, um, you can't always rely on that. I think my son Jake was playing with me once and he had a Tiger platoon and he rolled like five ones in a row and, and uh, couldn't get over a hedge with his whole tank formation. But uh, two plus typically is, is awesome. Um, and then the main, uh, well, one of the main selling points of the Tiger is its mighty 8.8 uh, centimeter gun. So it has a 40 inch range, so it outranges most uh, medium tanks, if not all in the, the, uh, this theater. And um, it has a very standard halted rate of fire of two, moving rate of fire of one, anti-tank rating of 14, and a three plus firepower. They also have four dice worth of machine guns um, at the typical range, no 50 cals. So these are just uh, uh, standard machine gun stats, uh, anti-tank two, uh, firepower six. You're gonna have a hard time digging folks out of uh, cover with those machine guns. Um, the this per stats for this particular tank include the, the um, is hit on a, a careful four plus. So it has a base four plus to be hit. Um, it has a skill rating of veteran, which is a three plus, and its motivation is four plus. However, the last stand and the remount are both two plus for the um, Tiger. So bailing out the Tiger is um, not a, uh, a very long-term success. <laughs> they, they usually just get right back in. All right, so th those are the basic stats. I guess the other thing we talk about is the special rules. The only really special rule that this has is the German generic stormtrooper uh, special rule, 
which gives it basically an extra movement order. So now let's talk about each one of these areas in a little bit more depth. The first stat I think we're going to talk about is um, probably not the most obvious when you're looking at uh, the stats of vehicles, but it is the uh, movement. So the Tiger Tank has a tactical uh, movement of 10 inches. Now this is, if you've played uh, the previous version of Flames of War version 3, um, an improvement over the speed of 8 inches that it got before. Um, before is a lot more dramatic um, difference between a heavy tank and a medium tank. In version 3 um, and in version 2, uh, Tiger Tank went 8, uh, Sherman went 12. Um, with a successful Stormtrooper move, uh, the Tiger could get up to 12, you would add 4 more inches. But there's a big gap between 8 and 12 inches. Um, in this version, the current version, that uh, move distance has really been flattened. So most medium tanks like the Sherman were dropped to 10 inches and the Tiger tank was up to 10 inches. So functionally at um, tactical speed anyway, uh, the Sherman tank is moving um, just as fast as a Sherman tank. The terrain dash, cross country and road dash is pretty much the same as a Sherman tank as well. Um, that uh, what I mentioned earlier the cross uh, value of 2 plus is um, very nice it's an improvement over the 3 plus of most medium tanks that you're going to face but um, it uh, at least for me if I seem to pass more 3 pluses then I I pass uh, 2 pluses whenever I have a 2 plus and one is inevitably rolled I don't know if you guys have that same problem, but that seems to plague our group quite a bit. Um, now, the Sherman can get down to, to two plus with uh, uh, under certain circumstances, but really the uh, the Tiger is uh, just as maneuverable as most medium tanks, and um, has the advantage of stormtroopers on top, which is granted hard to pull off in this version. Uh, but if you do, it can give you that little extra boost of mobility. All right, so um, the maneuverability of the tank is pretty good. Next, let's talk about the uh, vaunted and mighty armor. Now, the Tiger has an armor rating of 9 from the front. Um, so that's everything like basically 180 in the front of the hull. Um, and 9 is, when it's a mid-war tank, 9 is fantastic. There's not too much that can threaten you. Um, in late war, 9 is okay. It's not uh, incredibly great. Now granted, we're at D-Day, we're at the D-Day books, so kind of the beginning of the late war period. So 9 is still a, a pretty nice um, number. Um, particularly on the Western Front with the units you're going to be facing. Um, so 9 is, like I said, okay on the front. It's not fantastic. Uh, you're paying a lot of points for it. You want your tank to be safe, but um, the 9 is no better than a, a Panther. Um, now, where the armor shines on this guy is the side and the top. The side armor is 8. Um, I run a lot of Shermans and one of the things I try to do is get those flank shots. Uh, flanking shots against most tanks deny your opponent an armor roll. For example, the front armor of a Panzer IV is uh, 6. The side armor is 3. So if I get my anti-tank gun around the side, um, it's, it's an automatic penetration, whereas from the front he still has a 50-50 chance of bouncing it. So flank shots for most tanks are a big factor, but going down from 9 to 8 on the sides is uh, huge. You don't necessarily need to worry about exposing your flanks as much as a medium tank. You always need to worry about exposing your flanks, but um, not as much. The top armor 2 is also really uh, huge. One in assaults. Um, 
you know, opponents going after your top armor and two um, artillery and bombs. Um, top armor two means that most standard artillery, we're talking about 10.5, American 105 millimeter, um, only has an anti-tank rating of three. So the best it's gonna do against a Tiger tank is um, bail you out. To put all this in the context of the game, what does this mean when you're fighting? Well, it means um, if you're facing this poor guy, uh, an American Stuart tank, um, you have nothing to fear. The Stuart can't hurt you. His anti-tank of seven um, obviously can't hurt uh, front armor nine or side armor eight at all. So this poor guy is um, useless. He's even flanking, he can't do anything. Um, now he can't hurt a Panther, and that's a big um, distinction. A Panther has a side armor of five, Granted, it's not a great chance, but he can threaten a panther. Um, he can't threaten a tiger. So if you see a Stuart company facing you and you are running a tiger company, well, it's going to be a good day for you. Um, you can still lose. Trust me, you can still lose. Um, but you won't lose your tanks to Stuarts. Next guy up the chain is the standard Sherman. So this would be true for any um, tank that has a, an anti-tank rating of 10. So your, um, you know, your Cromwells, your British Shermans, and so on. Um, anti-tank 10 against a Tiger is a losing proposition as well. Uh, against front armor, you can only bail him out, the possibility of bailing him out. And that's if he rolls a one on his, his armor save, your anti-tank of 10 versus his front armor of nine. Against the side, it's a little bit better, but not much. Um, if he rolls a one, his tank is penetrated. Um, otherwise, he's gonna be you know, uh, equaling it on a roll of a two and three or higher, it's bouncing and he's safe. Um, that's the best uh, standard AT-10 medium tank can do against a tiger. Um, and again, one of the tactics you'll see with um, Sherman players is rushing to get on the flanks of your, your tank. Against uh, a similarly expensive Panther tank, that works great. Um, when you go from the side armor of nine, or sorry, front armor of nine on a Panther to the side armor of five, an anti-tank gun of, of 10 is uh, awesome. But um, you can rush in with five Shermans, uh, take some losses, and get to the flanks, and maybe deal with the whole platoon. Not so with the Tiger tank. You're only going to take one out if you get very lucky and count on your opponent rolling ones for their armor check. Um, and you're going to hear that a lot with the, sh the Sherman. And it's just a sign of, of good um, <laughs> game design for these Tigers. Um, so uh, there you go. That's... Uh, again, a, a losing proposition for this guy. Uh, tigers can effectively operate out in the open, out in cover against a Sherman tank, a Stuart tank, um, any any tank 10, medium tank without um, without concern. Okay, now things are getting a little bit interesting for our friend the Tiger. Um, we're talking about a Sherman 76 now, so we're moving up to anti-tank 12 against a Tiger. Um, all of a sudden now, um, that front armor of nines um, not making you impervious or practi practically impervious to your enemy. Um, at short range, that means that a one or a two being rolled will result in a penetration and a three will equal a uh, uh, possible bailed out. <coughs> so you're only bouncing um, these uh, Sherman 76s or any anti-tank 12 gun on a 4 plus. So that's a 50-50 chance of bouncing a shot. Um, go to the side and it's now uh, only a 33% chance of bouncing that shot. Uh, the kill rate for the the uh, Sherman 76 goes way up. And again, flanking now becomes a a more attractive proposition if you're running a Sherman 76s or again anything with anti-tank 12 uh, because now against a side armor of 8 you're penetrating 
50% of the time instead of 33% of the time. Um, and that's, that's a, a big statistical jump. I, I, I know it doesn't feel like it, um, but it, it is. It, um, it definitely makes a big difference. Um, the same thing when you're talking about one of the um, things a, a Tiger hates the most, and that's a M10 tank destroyer. Um, again, it's, it's anti-tank 12, so it's, um, the gun is functionally identical to what you find in the Sherman 76. This guy has a little bit farther range. I think it equals in range to the Tiger, uh, but still at range, once you throw in that armor bonus, um, anti-tank 12 is not that much of a threat to you. Um, so if you can keep them at arm's length, your front armor has effectively gone up to a 10 and the American player is in the boat of now only a, uh, you know, now the German only has to roll a one to fail. Um, so they're back down to that roll of one. Anything else in there, okay. Um, so those are some of the, the opponents you'll, you'll face. Um, so even those more scary anti-tank 12 um, tanks um, at long range aren't that scary. Um, I, when I run Tigers, I get worried when any tank 12 gets to short range um, or, um, you know, at, at uh, long range, keep them at arm's length, that uh, penetration percentage basically drops in half. And um, it's, it's a, a good thing. So in that case, you could successfully trade fire with, uh, with them at long range. Next, let's talk about that Tiger's gun, the famed 88. Um, this has an anti-tank rating of 14, so it's gone up by one uh, since version three. It used to be uh, 13. Um, what does that mean to your opponents? Well, it means that um, none of these guys at short range get a save. So if you hit any of these tanks at short range, you're going straight to your three up firepower. Um, that includes your, any, you know, you've got your anti-tank four, uh, six, I guess the, this one's a five now, six for the normal Sherman, seven for the Sherman 76. At uh, long range, the only guy who can potentially bounce one of your shots is the Sherman 76, and that is only if he rolls a, uh, a six on his armor. Um, and that will result in an equal. So there's no auto uh, bounce even at long range for any of these guys. Um, armor 7 currently is the best Americans can get. I know the, the British can uh, get a little bit higher, but you can see the effectiveness of this gun versus um, the, the Americans. And by extension, you know, most of the British armor. That is, I find, a huge um, factor in winning at Flames of War, if you can remove that save from someone. Um, I can't tell you how many times where I've been shot at, uh, you know, they shoot at my Sherman tank and I need a one to equal um, and I roll a one and now I'm not, I'm bailed out instead of destroyed or, you know, not even bailed out. Um, if you can completely remove that armor save throw from your enemy, um, that's just one less thing <laughs> <laughs> on your path to victory. Um, because let's face it, um, even though anti-tank 14 is awesome and you're automatically penetrating it, your firepower is still three plus. So it's still the same as, um, well, the Shermans and uh, M10. Um, so technically you're only destroying 66.6% .6 of every target you successfully penetrate. So if you have a uh, you know, two tigers, and you fire four shots, and you automatically hit with three of them, um, and they all automatically uh, penetrate because of the armor rating. Well, out of those three, two are going to be dead, and one's going to be bailed out. So, um, you know, you got to play those statistics. Always count on. Um, you know, your enemy rolling those sixes on their armor safe, always 
count on you rolling a one on your armor save. And that kind of helps you kind of mitigate your um, losses and also evaluate your, um, you know, evaluate your chances of what you can uh, inflict. Now the next thing is uh, with these tiger tanks in particular, but this is true in across all of Flames of War, is one of the best ways to be successful is um, to avoid overestimating what your unit can do and also underestimating what your unit can do. Um, one of the things I see a lot of people do is just go on instinct and, you know, let's say we throw four Sherman tanks at these four tigers to get on the flanks and destroy them. Um, you know, that might um, seem like a great idea, but if they're regular Shermans, that's not going to work. <laughs> um, because even if you do get to their flanks without getting shot, um, they're going to need to roll a one for you to penetrate their, their armor. Um, so that's a case of like overestimating what my Sherman platoon can do to you. Another thing is um, drawing an enemy into an unfair exchange. Like I mentioned earlier, uh, let's say you have two Tigers long range against some M10 tank destroyers. Um, you know, that might be a duel I consider staying in with my Tigers. Um, yes, I can possibly fail even at long range. My front armor 10, anti-tank 12, if I roll a 1, I'm penetrated again. Um, but look at the other side, even at long range, the M10 doesn't get a save. So if I can hit him, um, he has a 66.6 .6 chance of just being destroyed outright. Um, over multiple turns, that M10 platoon will, assuming average dice rolls, um, fail. Will either be totally destroyed or take enough damage that it will eventually run away. Um, so you got to watch for those things. Um, a player, when you're playing as a tiger and you see them deploy uh, um, M10 ambush um, at long range in your front armor, um, it's, it's not scary. Now if they can ambush at short range, um, well, <laughs> that's another story again. You've got to be more worried about that. But even then, um, anti-tank anti 12 uh, versus armor 9 is, um, you know, is, is a, a decent thing, but you have to be careful. So what can you do as a Tiger player to mitigate that? Well, unlike uh, when you're facing the Steward and the normal Sherman, you've got to make yourself harder to hit. And so that means cover. So tiger tanks you need to find cover so now you're starting to treat your tiger tank like everyone else treats their medium tanks uh, medium tanks typically do not rely on their armor for all of their survival they rely on their maneuverability and cover and concealment um, so tiger tanks need to take that to heart and start using those same tactics so if you're firing at long range against uh, concealed Shermans or concealed M10 tank destroyers, you want your Tigers to be concealed as well. You want to make sure that um, you know the, the odds are at least balanced if not tipped in your favor. And then the high uh, any tank of your own gun is going to tip that further into your, your favor. Um, the other thing is that you don't want to be surprised. You don't want to be ambushed. Um, one of the worst things you can do is have anti-tank 12 drop in at short range on your flanks. So that means when you're running a Tiger tank company, um, you need to have some kind of reconnaissance, particularly if you are attacking. Uh, you need to have some way to push out uh, those ambush spots so that, and granted you can never get rid of all of the ambush spots typically, but you can block out the most dangerous ones to your um, path of advance and uh, you know restrict where he can drop his ambush. Um, that's another uh, great way to make sure your, your tiger tanks stay alive. Next we're going to talk about infantry versus your mighty tiger tank. Um, whereas the German player, particularly in this time period, you don't have too much to worry about against um, other players tanks. 
Um, like we've said, the even the tank destroyers, the Sherman 76s, they're not that big a threat to you if you know how to, to manage your risk successfully. Infantry, on the other hand, can in a lot of ways pose a bigger threat to you. Um, one is you, um, there's a lot of them and you don't have a lot of tanks. The way that um, assault works in Flames of War is um, basically one swing. No matter how awesome this tank is, if these two tanks charge here, the most they're going to do that round uh, is kill those two guys before the, the other guys can swing back and go back and forth. Whereas a uh, Sherman platoon or a Panzer IV platoon could have double the tanks and basically have double the number of swings, if you will, in close combat. So the kill potential of medium tanks, cheaper tanks, is much higher than heavy tanks. Now, when you're fighting a smaller platoon, let's say like a British um, you know, motor rifle platoon or something that has a low amount of stands, a low density of stands, killing two or three in a, in a single round is, um, you know, is decent. But let's say you're going against an American rifle platoon or American armored rifle platoon that has 14 stands. Well, if you're just killing two around, um, there's a lot of incentive for that American player to just stick around and hope that you fail your, um, you know, your, your counterattack. So, and basically you have your motivation. Um, you know, you, you swing, then your opponent um, motivates to see if they stick around and swing, and then you motivate to see if you stick around and swing until someone runs away. Um, now your top armor two and your side armor of eight are gonna keep you relatively safe um, against things like bazookas, which are anti-tank 10, just like a Sherman shooting at you. So there is a potential, um, but keep that in mind and mitigate that. You, you have a potential of rolling a one and getting destroyed in close combat, and that seems pretty low, but if you do roll that one, you've just lost 12 points of your force. Um, the other thing to keep in mind is when you have four tanks, they can be more spread out. It makes it harder to be enveloped. Um, why is that important? Well, if, um, you know, if infantry can, and I know this is German infantry, so forgive me guys, um, can completely surround a tank so there's no way he can get out um, and he fails his counterattack, um, he's destroyed. He can't get away. Um, this is probably the number one way to destroy Tiger tanks as an allied player. It's the number one way as a Tiger you're going to lose your, your tanks against infantry is um, being surrounded so that you cannot, <laughs> you cannot back out if you need to. So um, keep that in mind. Infantry can be very, very um, dangerous. The other thing is too, um, as an infantry player, and you bring a, a tiger company, I'm not going to be that scared. Um, you know, typically most people will bring two tiger tanks to a platoon. That's the minimum, um, but it's still 24 points. Against infantry, that's um, you're shooting eight machine gun shots. That's it. Um, to repel an assault, um, on average, even if they're um, veteran infantry in the open, um, so hit on four in the open, uh, averages are you're not going to repel that assault. You're not going to get the five hits you need. Compare that to an equal number of Panzer IVs, which double the number of shots. You've got 16 instead of eight. Um, all of a sudden, infantry cannot just rely on charging you willy-nilly. They're going to have to do it through smoke, uh, across uh, cover, um, through maneuver to reduce the number of machine gun shots. But against the tanks, the infantry is not afraid to just charge them in the open. A lot of times you don't need to destroy the Tiger tanks to win. Um, you just need to prevent them from going where they need to go or um, overwhelm them and surround them so they can't run away and, and they're conversely destroyed. So infantry, again, are um, you know something to definitely be um, a little weary of if you were driving particularly a large number of Tiger tanks. Now, um, as far as list building goes, 
there's typically two ways you use a Tiger tank. One is to take the Tiger tank company. Yeah. And uh, that can be that can be cool. Um, it's definitely fun and as uh, Flames of War players, you should at least do it at least once because um, it's just awesome. Um, but you want to make sure you do it against an opponent that, um, that knows. Um, because it's not fun if you decide to bring a Tiger Tank company and they're a Stuart Light company. Um, like I said, they can still win, but um, that's something that typically... And here at All Miniatures Great and Small, we, we typically don't play with a cutthroat mentality. We like... Um, you know, we, we like to have some historical accuracy. We like to have a fair fight. Um, tournaments are a little bit different, but even those, um, you know, we try to keep blue versus red. Um, but the Tiger Company, sorry, I got distracted there. Um, it's expensive. You have, um, you know, the smallest you could take would be a five-man Tiger Company. Two platoons of two and the HQ of one. Um, at 100 points, you can you can get, what, eight of them? And that would be it. That would be like pretty much your whole army. Um, so if you take the bare minimum, yeah, you, you open up um, some points for recon, infantry, maybe artillery. Um, the only thing I'd recommend if you're going with a Tiger Tank company is recon. You want recon to be able to push back ambushes Recon can often be a good way to deal with infantry since they often have machine guns or at least keep them at bay. Um, cheap infantry platoons um, to screen your tanks would be good as well or to babysit an objective. Um, you want something that can hold an objective that's not 24 points, right? Uh, particularly if you have multiple objectives you're, you're trying to cover. Um, so that's again one way to field is a tiger tank company the more effective way i feel is just taking a tiger platoon as part of another formation whether it's an infantry formation a medium tank uh, formation um, but just throwing in a tiger tank platoon as um, you know an additional unit um, there when uh, you have a couple of tiger tanks they become a lot um, more more um, powerful they the synergy with your force i think is a little bit better um, because as a german player you'll be able to field more stuff and if you have more stuff it's harder for your opponents to get on your tiger's flanks um, the heavy guns on the tigers can deny parts of the board to an enemy while the rest of your army moves up um, there's a lot that the tiger can do to supplement another company. And we'll talk about companies um, at greater length um, at another time. But I just wanted to throw those out, the two ways you could field the Tiger Tank. And to wrap up this already long video, just to talk about the Tiger Tank um, as a, a playing piece. These are, are the metal ones. Um, I know they have really cool plastic kits now. Um, I like the fact that these things weigh a ton. Um, it just feels impressive. But the plastic kits are, are awesome as well. Um, but Tiger Tanks are iconic. Well, let's face it. Um, if you have a passing uh, interest in World War II history, you know what a Tiger Tank is. Um, just like a Sherman, um, it's one of those things that you just know about. They're in movies. They're the big bad. Um, and that is a, a boon and a curse. I think that is the reputation of the tiger in some cases gets a little overblown uh, in flames of war many times i've seen a new player come into uh, the game system and immediately they go for the tiger tank company uh, why because it's iconic the tiger tanks look cool um, you don't need a lot of them to build out your force um, they are so much better than everybody else's tanks um, so there's a lot to attract a, a particularly a, a new person to the game. Uh, what you have to be careful of is um, don't expect too much of them. Because yes, they're awesome. Yes, they can win you the battle. Yes, they can take on a bunch of medium tanks all by themselves. Um, but there are ways that they can be destroyed. And um, that's what you got to watch out for. 
So if you are getting new into the game, you're considering a Tiger company and you're watching this, just know that. Um, so there you go, guys. That is a kind of a, a long form discussion on the mighty Tiger One tank for the Western Front late war. So that's your Fortress Europe book, your um, D-Day German book. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, let me know in the comments down below. Uh, I really appreciate uh, all the comments you guys leave and I know that you guys have been uh, super supportive of me and the channel over the last few videos and I really appreciate that. So there you go guys. That is the Tiger Tank for Flames of War. Thanks for watching and keep on wargaming.